What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Even Podcast. Today, we're going to be sitting down with my buddy, Josh Wielden. Not only is he a veteran of the United States Army, and I'm so thankful for our veterans. Everybody knows that. Um, here at Off the Deep End, we like to host stories of what they experience to put you in their shoes, understand what it's like to lose friends overseas. How do you recover from PTSD? What coping mechanisms are there that are non-negative, that won't destroy you? How do we avoid throwing our issues into alcoholism or drugs or or just isolation? How can we ultimately prevent veteran suicide is the goal of sharing these stories. So every single person that is listening to this, I hope you enjoy um, other people's perspectives. And thank you so much for tapping into another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about PNW Vets, the Facebook group that is connecting veteran service organizations and people who just care about another human being with each other. There is nothing better than helping another human being. And I love that vets are helping vets because who better to understand what you've gone through than somebody who's gone through it themselves. Let's tap in and let's get started. Are you thinking about making a podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one. And if I can figure it out, you definitely can too. You can create your own content all in one place for free with zero hangups and even earn money as soon as you get started. Spotify lets you record and edit episodes from your phone or computer so you can go mobile just like I enjoy to do. My favorite thing about it is that you can create video episodes if you wish and upload them to wherever podcasts are heard. You can even set up subscriptions or if you're like me, listen to support options for listeners to help you grow. I 10 out of 10 recommend the Spotify for Podcasters app. Or, you know, why don't you just step over to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your own podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Off the Deep Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Eddie. Today, joining me is the man, the myth, the Smith and Wesson, or Glock, uh, I would as I would call him. Um, he is Josh Wilden. He is not only the f- co-founder of PNW Vets, but he's also been organizing so many great interactions between veteran organizations in my local area, and I'm so thankful to have him on. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, brother. So why don't we start with you telling me a little bit about your military experience, your background, and what led you to try to put together over 10,000 vets? Yeah, so, uh, you know, you always, uh, I've been on a couple different podcasts, and and the question is, where do you start, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the, that's the question. Right. So if, if we go to straight uh, where my military story began, um, I'd be glossing over a whole bunch of stuff that uh, would probably paint a little clearer picture. So um, I, when I was just sitting here uh, kind of writing down my thoughts, what am I going to talk to Eddie about? How am I going to tell him why I joined the military? Um, I compiled a little list of, of some people's names and I'm not going to even say their names. What I want to do is tell you, I have uh, 13 of my um, family, my family, from my grandpa to my uncle, there was 13 of us that served in the military. Hmm. So like, uh, just let that sink in. Like, uh, and now I want you to think about this. I have a picture somewhere. I'll have to find it. My grandma's living room wall. There was a picture of all of us. Right. So uh, from... My grandpa in in Guam in the 50s, to, uh, my cousin on his aircraft carrier in the 2000s, to me in basic training. So there was all these pictures on the wall of my grandma's house. And there's a couple of the couple of the people that are like why I joined. Uh, I want to share a little bit of information about them. So you kind of have a, a better understanding of why I joined the Army. So... Uh, Looking at my, of course, I already told you my grandpa. Then the two of the people that uh, really stick out to me are my great uncle and my dad. Mm. So I'll, I'll start by telling you a little about my great uncle. My great uncle, his name's Howard Magnuson. His name was Howard Magnuson. He served in the 401st Bomb Group, the 613th Bomb Squadron in the Army Navy Air Corps, right? And he was a POW. He was on the, the B-17, the W, uh, what is it? The 42-31037, the pistol packing mamas. 
The pistol packing right. mamas. <laughs> pistol I love packing it. mamas. And he was a ball turn gunner in World War II. And uh, he was shot down, right? So they were, he was a ball turn gunner that was shot down on uh, 20 July 1944 yeah, over Germany. And he, mm-hmm. uh, he lived to tell about it. Wow. Right. So the, the, um, what's crazy to me is uh, I have a whole newspaper article that my grandma sent me like with his whole story. And, uh, I don't know if you know the rates of ball turned gunners that survived getting shot down in world war two, but it wasn't too high. Definitely not very high. Right? And so, uh, he moved, uh, they moved, they lived down in, uh, town called Nacell, Washington. If you've ever been to Long Beach, you might know where Nacell is, but I'm I'm guessing the normal person listening to this has no idea, right? So he, he uh, my great uncle drove log truck. He drove log truck for many years. And I, I remember a couple uh, distinct parts of my childhood where uh, my sister sprayed him with the hose and he, he liked to smoke. He liked uh, uh, some drink, you know, but my sister sprayed him with the hose and he took off his shirt and he had some marks on his back from when he was a POW. Yeah. Uh, he was very uh, self-conscious of that specifically. Right. So uh, he passed away, uh, had COPD and, and numerous other things led to his demise, but he passed away a while uh, when I was a kid. And uh, I knew that my great uncle Howard was in the military and he was a POW. So that's pretty solid. Right. And then, uh, um, and then of course my, my grandpa, my two cousins, uh, they were like my brothers, they joined them. The, they all joined the Navy. Right. So my dad was in the Navy. My grandpa was in the Navy. My two cousins were in the Navy. Um, so all that they're in the Navy. And, um, then my dad, he, he was in the, uh, he was in the Navy. He was a boiler tech. So he was a boiler tech on the USS Midway. Ooh. And, and so we, uh, we, tr- we drove around in the woods hunting for years and years and years, right? Always in the woods. And I was, I was the guy my dad would tell the stories to. So I heard stories of Hong Kong and Japan, probably things like 10, 12 year old kids shouldn't hear. Like, I'm probably not going to tell Maverick about, um, stories like my dad told me, Yeah, I, I learned, I learned a thing or two about the Navy and I learned that you could, uh, have fun in other countries (laughs) and and the and the uh like the hazing rituals that happen when people become shellbacks and oh yeah you go from a polywog to a shellback to a golden shellback and and uh i told i might have told you before i when i was growing up we had this shellback certificate you know it's probably 20 inches wide 13 inches tall a big certificate you know mounted on the wall at the house and that was the you don't touch that that's mine, you know, and it's still in the wall at my mom's house to this day. Uh, so those, all these family members I have, they all kind of set the precedence for, for me to, well, I tried college, didn't work out. So why don't I join the army or something, you know? So how I got to that point, I, uh, I went to college over in Yakima, a uh, community college. Had, had all these aspirations. Oh, I'm going to go walk onto the wrestling team. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, uh, now that I think about it, I should have tried harder at football and wrestling, but Hey, that's another story. Right? <laughs> um, so I made it about two quarters in college and I came home. I, I, uh, I didn't do too good. Hmm. Found, uh, uh, found some other ways to occupy my time. And uh, the college grades didn't didn't coincide with those uh, extracurricular activities. Oh yes. So, <laughs> um, what did I do? I, I was working at Home Depot, and one of the guys there was just got out of the army, and he, he likes it. Yo, you ever thought about going to the army? So, of course, uh, being a bigger dude, I had to do some running. So I I did some running with the Marine Corps recruiter because I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna be an embassy guard. Because, you know, the Marine Corps is the men's department of the Navy, right? Oh, so, yes. Yes, I've heard. <laughs> but uh, so I was thinking, man. I didn't know men ate crayons, but it's okay. Those those uniforms are nice. You know, they get to go sit in an embassy. You know, I thought, man, that sounded pretty cool. Until the fact they said you had to be an infantryman for 
couple of years before you might get selected to go on embassy guard detail. And I was like, ooh, that doesn't sound good. So I walked across the hall to the Army. Hey, Army, what do you got? And they said, oh, you want to be a military police officer? Let's go. So I signed up. And I was in the delayed entry program for like a month or something. And then I ended up at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, then the story kind of just builds from there, right? I was only in the Army for five years. Uh, went, to, But I went to Korea, came back, worked law enforcement here on JBLM. So the, the common myth is that the law, the, the MP or the security forces, whatever, uh, mastered at arms, what did the Navy call it? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, mastered at arms, yeah. Um, is, the, is the security guard, right? Well, let me be the person to tell you, here at JBLM, we went to INS. We had drugs coming in the gates. We had murders. We had child abuse, domestic violence. Anything you could think about in the real world, it happened right here. Like, um, I remember vividly, there's a, a lady arguing with the neighbor because the husbands were deployed and she was talking to her man and she went in there and like broke their fish tank. The house was a disaster. The four-year-old daughter was sitting on the couch. The, the one lady stabbed the other lady in the side and she's like, oh, I'm just bleeding a little bit. And she had a gash in her stomach like, what is this? Yeah. So that painted the picture like, I do not want to do this in the real world if it's this bad on post. <laughs> right so um then i uh after working the road for a little bit i, I deployed to iraq uh, i was there for 15 months um we went we we had a iraqi police team we we trained and we trained iraqi police officers what's called a pit team so we we ran pit teams our company was responsible for fallujah to al Qaim. so that's a syrian border fallujah um, and i was in a little town called habania our good friend Elliot was in Habania. I was in Habania for the first month and I didn't even know that Elliot and I were in the same place until just like two MVP huddles ago. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So we went, Lari Da went to Haditha uh, just after uh, some crazy stuff went on there. Um, so we, we went on walking patrols every day, lifted weights, smoked hookah, burned shit, you know, like did all, all the good stuff. Um, then I came home and I was trying to get out. I, I wanted out of the army. Um, so to gloss over a few things, not to get in too much detail, I, uh, well, in Korea, I had some of the best and worst experiences of my military time. So I like to drink a little bit. So I went to ASAP a couple times, <laughs> command referred to ASAP for fighting, uh, lost some rank, got some rank, lost some rank again. And the same kind of thing happened in Fort Lewis, so get in trouble. I remember I, I wrecked a vehicle um, just before our deployment, and the Sergeant Major told me I was lower than whale shit. I was the epitome of the Army. You will never drive again a day in the Army, right? Then I was a driver in Iraq like 60 days later. So, bro, you tell me how I'll never drive in the Army. So, like, I, uh, it was that. And then that was... Uh, um. The reason why when I come back, I was like, well, maybe I am a fat piece of shit. Maybe I do want to be out of the army. Well, get me out of here. So I got out of the army. And then all of my friends deployed to Afghanistan shortly after. And I was able to find um, a way to go to Afghanistan as a civilian. Uh, it just so happens they like to pay pay some people a lot of money to go do some jobs. Of uh, It was too, it was too uh, expensive to train military members to do like uh, mass training. So I went and operated the counter rocket artillery mortar systems in the army. It's called, it's a 14 Juliet. It's air defense artillery system that detects rockets and mortars. So I got to go up. Uh, I was on the Pakistan border, Northeast of Jalalabad, the little fob called fob Joyce, uh, uh, tracking mortars and rockets. So we got shot at a lot. And yeah. when I'm saying a lot, that might be an understatement. We got shot at a lot. I made my money. Right. So, uh, that's what I did. And I, I remember I wrote a check for my first house, like a big lump sum. And I was like, dude, if I could ever have that much money in the bank account to write a check that big again, it was pretty awesome. Oh, you know? wow. So um, just, uh, just so I understand the weapon system you're operating, it it's more further range than the C-RAM because the C-RAM go, only yeah, goes out to like one mile. C-RAM is, C-RAM is what I operated. Oh, okay. But so civilians in the battlefield cannot operate CRAM systems with the phalanx weapon. 
So we didn't have the weapon. All we were responsible for is the early warn system. Mm. So I'm, you know, uh, I don't know what you know about CRAM, but the LCMR systems, we're tracking 20 clicks, bro. It's not just a mile. Oh, okay. We're track, we are tracking like a VCR. Like Excellent. that, it, it is, uh, yeah, I, I remember specifically a couple a couple warnings we gave. I gave a 20 second warn on a couple 103s and I had a guy come in and he told me, he goes, he come into the talk shaking, his hands were just trembling, and he's like, uh, a KBR contractor. He goes, who hit the button? And we're like, what are you talking about? He goes, who hit the button? Bro, it was me. Like, I'm sitting by the system. Dude, it was me. What's up? He goes, man, those three rounds just hit the generator I was working on, and you just saved me, bro. Like, his hands were shaking, his body was trembling, and he's, like, starting to cry. He's like, I have to get a new generator. I can't fix that one. But you literally just saved me. So it was like those kind of uh, those kind of days, and they happen every day, you know. So it was like, yeah. Uh, and three one three nine was a grid coordinate. So I know exactly where we were taking rounds from. And then like the Pakistan border, there's uh, we had the C, uh, the raid cameras, so we we're able to watch the we we're able to watch the troops. We'd pull Overwatch with the raid cams. We'd be uh, have guys in the towers communicating with them while they would be in. Uh, they might be engaging the, the enemy or something and we could watch it like it was right there. Um, and there, and then you go outside and actually look up there with binoculars, like, Oh yeah, it is going on. You know, like it's real life. It's not just the TV. Um, so I did that supported some real good guys from, uh, from Hawaii and Fort Carson from the cacti two, three, five, and from uh, the guys at Fort Carson in two twelve. So it was cool. When I was in the army, I learned the MP way. And then when I was a civilian, I learned how the real rest of the military works as a cohesive unit. So that's one thing like uh, oftentimes say your job, like my dad, he was a boiler tech in the Navy. Uh, boiler tech was his gig, right? That was his job. He might not have known what an aviation structural mechanic does or what a, a firefighter does. Like they had their subtaskings and stuff, but you don't really know the other lanes um, because you're so singular in your job set. It, it's like a an HR guy doesn't know what the operations guy does. You know, like you might know, but you don't know. All right. So um, I learned that. Come back, going to college. Uh, I was delivering car parts in Seattle. So I was working for a place called Seattle Automotive Distributing, delivering car parts with some grimy Vietnam vets. I think they're more interested in smoking their cigarettes and sitting outside complaining than delivering car parts. So, but I made some good friends, right? And they're like, bro, you gotta get out of here. Like, <laughs> you have to leave this place, you know? So um, I was going to college while I was working there and a friend of mine, um, an, a, a founder of PNW Vets, uh, he actually started PNW Vets. Here, here's how, uh, his name's Josh Penner. He's the mayor of a city here, Ording, Washington. He's the mayor of the city. Um, if you look at PNW Vets, when you're actually on the URL, it says uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WA Veterans Help. So Josh had the outreach job before me. And he's like, hey, I'm going to get this WA Veterans Help page started. And then when I came along, I was like, yo, PNW Vets, man, it's about branding. Let's do it. So we changed the name. So the name on the page is PNW Vets. But up top, it says Law Veterans Help. That's the actual URL for the Facebook group that he started. So Josh got me into doing some veteran outreach. I, I did that for a little bit. And then uh, while going to school, completing that degree. And I went, you found out, I, I went to work for the, I went to work at St. Vincent de Paul at the food bank in Seattle for a little bit. Um, and it wasn't my jam. So I was trying to get on with the VA. My friend, Brian Milkraik, he started this program called uh, Veteran Rights, um, part of Task Force 12. They bring veterans out, do very awesome healing type practices. Ryan uh, said, hey, I want, you to I want to introduce you to the external affairs director of the VA regional office. So I talked to him, he encouraged me to apply. I didn't have a college degree. I applied, I didn't get accepted. So I was like, man, here it is. Didn't get accepted again. Yep, I get it. Cool. And then I took a job with the PVA, with Paralyzed Veterans of America. And I worked in the spinal cord injury unit 
at the Seattle VA hospital. What people don't understand about PVA is the Paralyzed Veterans of America are integrated within the spinal cord injury units at Palo Alto, Seattle, multiple VA hospitals. They have that uh, VSO, a veteran service officer that's integrated into their system. And they, um, they specialize in spinal cord injury. And the other two things are ALS and MS. So ALS, MS, and spinal cord injury, if you have any veteran that needs help with those three contentions and they're not working with the PVA, they're doing themselves an injustice because those ALS, MS, and spinal cord injury are the, the reasons why PVA is there. And the whole history of PVA started as a special project within Wounded Warrior Project, a lot, a lot, a lot. There's a lot of, or it was the other way. Wounded Warrior Project started with PVA special project, giving backpacks to soldiers there's history between the, the two is what I'm trying to say. So I did that for a minute and it was really just a minute because I finished college at the same time I was working there. And then I got a, a job with the Seattle regional office um, doing strategic outreach, working on the public contact team. So when you don't get your VA disability check and you think it's the VA's fault, people can come in and cuss me out, you know, like, you're the reason I'm not getting paid. I'm like, no, you're the reason you overdrafted your account and then changed bank accounts and didn't tell the VA. Come on, man. It's not my fault. Like, yeah. it's your fault. Um, so we would get yelled at, cussed at. It was wild. But I, I was able to create, um, help create the uh, a strategic outreach plan targeting incarcerated veterans. Um I had the opportunity to go inside some of RJC and Canton actually work with the, within the veterans pod. Uh, did some LGBTQ outreach, some uh, Native American outreach, uh, making some really good friends at some of the tribes. I went to veteran sweats. I've uh, I got a medallion from the Suquamish tribe from their veteran elder. It, it's a uh, it was cool to kind of get out and meet um, these other people in the community doing great things. And then. Um, I rode the bus to downtown from Federal Way, Federal Way Transit Center, bus 577. Took 577 to downtown Seattle for three years. And um, a good friend of mine, she was the previous uh, Gold Star mother of Washington. Her name's Monica McNeil. She, uh, we had, um, I guess she's like my second mother. My mom lives in Oregon and Monica's like my mom here. Right, So I got a couple of veterans and people that I, I'm like, these are my family members here, but they're not really my family, but they are. That's kind of I think we thing. all have that. And it's so important. Yeah. So uh, she goes, hey, there's this job. You need to apply for it at Madigan, working with transitioning service members. Uh, so I got a, I, it was called the WTB then, Warrior Transition Battalion. And if you know the history of that, right, uh, Walter Reed, there's some um, stuff that went on at Walter Reed back a long time ago. And they said, oh, we need to take better care of our soldiers and that are coming home. Uh, going through this um, medical evaluation process. So they stood up all these WTVs. So now they're called the Soldier Recovery Unit. We have 14 Soldier Recovery Units throughout the Army. Uh, and I'm just lucky enough to be a, a transition coordinator. Um, so I, I help soldiers identify career and education goals when they transition. Um, so that's what I do now. So now I want to tell you about PNW Vets real quick, all right? Uh, PNW vets in so like uh, like everything else, I looked at looked up some interesting tools. So I don't know if if anybody that's listening to this or if you are familiar, if you own a public group within Facebook, you can look at Insight. Um, and within the Insight tools, they have growth, engagement, etc. Right. So just like uh, I think I, I looked and it was the, the group was started about nine years ago. So if I backdate myself to nine years, I was probably doing outreach. Uh, and at that time, I was working with a lot of homeless veterans. Uh, I'm not saying anything's bad about homeless veterans in any way, shape or form. Everybody has their moments. But I can tell you as a provider, I really got burned out. Right. I had that I had that provider burnout type uh, scenario where I felt everybody wants housing. I'm not going to be able to get everybody housing. I need a career change. But what I can do is look out for veterans that I felt were like myself, that might have identified like myself. And by that, I'm saying, yeah, we had some rocky times, uh, a lot of rocky times. 
but I also was able to uh, transition out while getting a job and going to school. And I had a day job. I owned a home. I had a family. I have a family, right? So I was like, I need to find a way where I could find veterans that I could go drink beer with at a brewery or wherever, or the VFW. Like, where could I find veterans that are like me, which I think is air quote successful transition, had a successful transition, and I could get them engaged in other programs in the community. So that was kind of the basis of PNW Vets. How do we bring like-minded individuals together to make sure that you have the best resources the quickest possible way? Hmm. So you'll be able to help people that are that have similarities to you way better than you be able to even to relate to somebody or understand their experience that they're having. Yeah. So that that's what that's what we did. And um, I, so in the PNW vets realm, I've had uh, very good people that have helped me with uh, I didn't have any admin team for a little while. Right? I thought, oh, me and Josh, we can handle this. We don't need an admin team. And then as soon as it got like over 3000 or something, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up with the day in and day out. And then like the spammy, uh, look at this porn site that comes across the thing. Like, what is this? So then we had to go into all the different tools and, um, and kind of filter some things out and, and set the group rules and set this, uh, set these, I'm not going to sell stuff. I'm not going to put up GoFundMe. So there's rules when people join the page and you got to answer the questions to get on the page. Um, but then like, Right now we have, uh, there's four of us that are admin and the admin team is from uh, a guy that's Okonus who lives over in Japan. He helps us, uh, Ray, he helps us with a lot of the background, the admin stuff, the rules. And he served in the Marine Corps with Josh Penner and Josh. And then uh, Thomas DiGiorgio is a, is a part of the admin team. And you met, you had the ability, the opportunity to meet Thomas. Mm-hmm. And uh, we connected with him when he was at UW and TCC doing some really good work with the student veterans um, here locally in Pierce County. So he's one of our admin guys. And we've had others. We've had others that work for the state, work for colleges. um, And it's just very rewarding when you could look at the information that's provided. And so I I hosted a, a pub crawl and we had. Uh, I don't know, 30 to 50 veterans walking around downtown Tacoma, man. We went from Steel Creek to the to Odd Otter to the office, all these places. Like, we just went from bar to bar. We all had a T-shirt on. You know, we went from bar to bar. Um, and I'm not saying everything in the veteran space is about drinking, but what it is is about get, gathering a community and in, in a safe place where you feel comfortable being around your peers. So, like, I, I haven't drank beer since 2017. All right. So like me going to a brewery is pointless. Like I used to really love beer. Now I don't even drink it, but I'll still go meet a bunch of veterans at a brewery and I'll have a water with a lemon or something. But um, I still like whiskey and bourbon and scotch, but that's not at a brewery, you know? So it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to step outside my own comfort zone to go hang out with them, some guys cause, and gals. Cause I just know that's uh, usually it's a nice vibe. You know, the, the community comes together and there's room to talk and, and things like that. And uh, so we've had pub crawls, socials at breweries, a camp out, barbecues. I've done all these. This COVID kind of really messed it up, right? So I didn't do really, I didn't do social gatherings during COVID. Um, I did one uh, kind of PNW Vets meetup where I had VSOs. I called it a VSO meetup. Uh, so VSO. Everybody thinks, oh, what VSO? Oh, I'm not a VSO. Well, what does that mean, right? That a veteran service officer, you accredited veteran service officer? Are you a veteran service organization? Bam, the plot thickens. Are, do you do claims or do you help people? You know, like there, there's, or veteran security operations. There's a security company in Puyallup that's armed guards, a bunch of veterans that have the name VSO. So it's like, what what is that mean right so it's like you really have to dive into what does it mean and so as a vso meetup i i said i want everybody that could uh, help a veteran and their families that that's a service provider that wants to hire a veteran help a veteran is a veteran wants to be an advocate whatever your passion is 
if it has to do with the veteran space at all, I want you to come. So I did that a couple summers ago. And then over, uh, I think it was probably Veterans Day week, I got asked about five times, hey, when are you going to have another one of your meetings? What? I don't know. Leave me alone. Like I, I have a job and I, you know, I have a family and my son plays multiple sports and we got to travel to Oregon for fam. So I was like, and so I do things kind of like sporadically. So I just pick a day. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I think we had a meeting December 18th or something, you know, I'm just going to pick a day and we're going to go with it. Uh, I used to wear a hat that said, fuck it, run it. All right. Like, I don't know. Let's just pick it out. Whatever. Yeah. You want to go shoot? Let's go shoot. You want to go, uh, go off road and let's go. Who cares? You know? Um, so that's what I did. And then I listened to the people uh, at this meeting and they're so grateful that we brought this, this group of people back together. And they're like, Josh, many people have tried and nobody has been successful. How, how do we continue this? So we decided, um, after talking that we we're going to do these PNW vets, Pierce County coalition meetings, the third Wednesday of every month. And no, we don't have a set in stone place that we're going to meet, but I know it's the third Wednesday of the month. So if it's at the VFW, if it's at AMVET, if it's at um, a nonprofit or a library or a restaurant where like the sky is the limit when it comes to meeting, like, I don't, when it gets nice, we could even host up in the parking lot at Emerald Queen casino or something. I don't know. Like it doesn't a park. It could be anywhere. Um, but the sole purpose of it is to really to build those relationships and strengthen the community. Because if you have a relationship with the person you're going to refer someone to, then you have a sense, like it makes your heart feel like, oh, I know if I tell Eddie that Eddie's going to take the best care of them, you know, like I would my family. I know he's going to look out for them. So we did that. We had another meeting in January. Now I've had requests from uh, Washington County, Oregon. If you don't know, that's where Hillsboro, Oregon is. We had people in Hillsboro, Oregon say, hey, can you help me start a county meeting to eastern Washington, up and down the I-5 corridor from Whatcom County to Clark County, uh, Grace Harbor County. That's where Aberdeen is. Uh, so it's like there's all these counties are like, hey, that's a good idea. And what I find, um, there's some uh, common misconceptions, and this is this is Eddie's podcast, so I can talk about these misconceptions and not Hell feel yeah, guilty. air it out. The, so a lot of times in the veteran space, people get stuck on uh, people get stuck on this. Oh, you're taking my veteran. It's not talked about, but I know it's there, mm -hmm. right? This, oh, you're going to help them with a claim and I'm not going to get numbers. Oh, you're going to get them. You're going to take my money from my state grant or my county grant or my nonprofit grant. You're going to take my money. And I don't know if I want to be in the same room as you. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, they're stealing my veterans. They're stealing my demographics. And I know from doing outreach in the nonprofit world that a lot of nonprofits thrive off of this demographic data, this data mining of um, the company I worked for got hundreds of thousands of dollars from the county. And they, they were, we reported demographics and that's how we justified the money that we continue to get. So I know like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. Right. I want every veteran business to be successful, but there's a point when you have to lower, lower your guard, lower that expectation. I am not here for any reason other than connecting you together. So if you work for Eddie's veteran services and Josh has Josh's veteran services, if we have these things and I, I'm getting money, you're getting money, we're getting the same pot of money or no money at all. I want to make sure that then when this dude needs housing, you're going to get him the best resource in the fewest steps. What does 100%. that look like? So that's why I feel like PNW Vets is just that. It's a Facebook group. It's a Facebook group that I had t-shirts made a long time ago. That some people still have, you know, like what, what are we, you know, we're federal employees, County employees, state employees, city representatives. Uh, the sky's the limit disabled veterans that don't do anything, but help other veterans. So it's like when, when these meetings come together, it, there's all those people in the same room. And when you don't, when you don't mix, um, job necessarily titles or what agency 
Yes, the people of Saint, I ask where they work so that I know how how we can connect each other, right? We ask the people's why, why they do what they do, why they work where they work, where they live, why do they live there? So it's really, you kind of get in the weeds of understanding their them as a person, mm. not just an agency. So um, that's why, and like just looking at our number, looking at this insight, right? I can tell you just at a glance, uh, 5,000 ish veterans that are there right now that uh, the most popular day for looking for resources and posting veteran resources is a Thursday, right? <laughs> that on Thursdays at eight o'clock at night is the time that people are usually engaging. And then on Sundays in the morning and at eight o'clock at night, people are looking for resources. And then there's all types of the biggest, the top, the top uh, posts have to do with the lockdown that happened at American Lake just recently mm. to the veteran meeting, bringing veterans fishing, uh, a memorial service for a veteran. So th uh, those are just the top things that have really engaged um, over the past uh, couple of weeks. It's actually the last 28 days. And I have my top providers. Uh, Oh, Eddie, you're a top contributor now. In the last 14 weeks, you're a top contributor. Because I care so much. Yeah. Yeah, man. And then, like, the gender um, the gender gap is 66% uh, males, 34% female. And it has the age range, age breakdown. Or it looks like we're kind of crushing that 35 to 44 age range. And you know Excellent. what? 35 to 44 could be people like me. Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, it could be people like me, but it could be um, retirees that were retired star majors, 34 year, or 44 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what what does that look like? And then our top cities, right now we got uh, Tacoma, Seattle, Lacey, Olympia, and it only makes sense, right? Where where do we live? How are we able to get that out? And we're spread out through countries even, you know? And it's crazy to see, yeah, the top, what is this? Spanaway, Fort Lewis, South Hill, Lakewood, Puyallup, Graham, Olympia, Lacey, Seattle. So it's very strong here. But I really, really want to build Oregon and Idaho. I want to make sure that in Oregon, where there's um, there's still great nonprofits doing great work, but there's no active duty military installation. You know, over in Warrenton, there, there's a National Guard throughout the state. Hermiston, Oregon, there's an armory. There's some good guys in, in the east side of Oregon, as well as Washington. So I, I really want to take this this model, and that's what I was saying. I might have told you this, make this I-5 connection, right? So we're covering we're covering Canada to California in one imagine one day, 10, 20 years from now. You could say on the third Wednesday of every month at six o'clock, whether you're in Salem, Oregon, or you're in Bellingham, Washington. There's some veterans meeting and all you got to do is get online and check it out where are they at, you know, and have a list of these counties that are engaged. And, and it doesn't cost the, anything. Yeah, it's just out of the nothing, kindness of people's hearts. Yeah. That want to show up to help. Mm, you know, I love that. So it's the, it's really cool to see these different, um, like the insight from the uh, analytics that are on uh, Facebook alone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the, that's the whole concept. And so, so uh, February 15th, we'll launch in Thurston County. Yep. Thurston County is going live at the Lacey Veterans Hub. I have a couple people that, I, that I've worked with for some time that I have, that I know uh, really will share the mission. You know, it's, it's uh, creating, that, creating that network of support services to help veteran, veterans and their families thrive in their community. So, yeah, here, in, uh, in here next month, we're going live in... Uh, Lacey Veterans Hub, February 15th, February 15th, and uh, uh, BFW State Headquarters in Fife, February 15th. Um, and there's some people, like, continuing that mission. I want to help veterans and family members thrive in their community, and that is the basis of it. Um, and, and quite frankly, if you know anybody that owns a, owns a company, owns a space, would allow some veterans to come into your space and really learn what you do, um, that's kind of what it is. So uh, starting next month here in Pierce County, we're going to have an agency share probably 20, 30 minutes, probably 20, 20 minutes talk, uh, 10 minutes um, question and answer about their organization. What does that look like? 
and starting in Thurston County and all the all the counties that'll come. Um, it's really a sit down, discuss your top three basic needs for the veteran population in your county. The next month is kind of learn who each other are, build that relationship, share some food, share some thought and discuss and then discuss your why. And then move into the same kind of concept as this lunch and learn, um, this lunch and learn concept. And then to kick it all off, February or not February, I haven't set a date, but you know what, Eddie? Let's let's set a date. Let's say, I told you how I am, bro. This is how yeah. I am. Let's say spring 2023 starts, I think it's March 20th. So yes. let's say March 25th, we're going to have a social at a brewery somewhere in Pierce County, Thurston County, maybe both, right? We're going to have, we're going to have a get together, a veteran get together in Pierce County, whether it's at my VFW or at Seven Seeds Brewery or Fob Brewery whatever we're going to, we're going to have a get together and call it the spring opener. So it's going to be PNW vet spring opener. Um, and that will kick off the spring and solidify this meetings that we're having and give us a time to share outside of a meeting format um, with each other and kind of really build those relationships. But other than that, man, that's me and PNW vets. Um, we got some private football lessons to get to tonight, meeting at the church, got all kinds of things going on. So absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate your time uh, breaking down what PNW Vets is and why it's, why it's needed and why it can help other people. There's nothing better when people who have like-minded uh, goals, like helping another person, whether they're a vet or not, or the vet or family, goal star moms, you know, members in our community that serve the country, they are often neglected and looked over. And we don't have to do that as veterans. We can look after our brothers and sisters. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to help me understand what PNW's vision is for the future and how we can all work together with these different organizations to help just one more person. Because I've used it. I believe in your your methodology. I used it just last week. Now somebody's uh, for the first time in ten years going to an apartment and he's overwhelmed. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him my old air fryer. I'm I'm gonna do a food drive and do a something for him, man. So I love it and thank you so much for your time and I look forward to hearing your story next week. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Yep.